Regional South Australia has always been at the core of our economic achievement. Always has been. From the earliest years post-European settlement, our colony has always seen our wealth almost exclusively being derived from agriculture, whether it be the wheat fields to the vineyards. And the bounty of our regions underpinned the capacity of our economy to grow throughout the 19th century as we approached federation. Without the wealth that our regions poured into our capital city, Adelaide's streetscape would look very different today. There would be no Adelaide Town Hall. There would be no GPO building, St Peter's Cathedral. There would have been no old Parliament House and new Parliament House would have never been completed following that. In fact, there's not much on North Terrace that would be there today without the contribution of the economic powerhouse of our regions. These are monuments that stand as demonstration of what the pioneers of our state contributed to our economy as a whole. And on those sturdy foundations, we have built an economy and our prosperity from agriculture to mining, from mining to consumer manufacturing, from consumer manufacturing to the auto industry, and from there, today, on the precipice of an advanced industrial manufacturing future based on industries such as defence and space. South Australia, since Federation, has grown and changed. But through it all, at every step, our regions have remained absolutely essential to our economic story. The establishment of our state's manufacturing industries during the era commenced under Premier Sir Thomas Playford was only made possible because of the contribution that we saw within our regions. The initiative of building a, a pipeline from Morgan to Wyala, some 358 kilometres long, established Wyala as the industrial manufacturing powerhouse of our state. Much of that was a function of electrification. And that electrification was formed on the back of another Playford initiative through the Lee Creek coal mine, providing trainload after trainload of coal to light our cities and homes and across the state. So today, as we seek to replicate that same effort that was engineered in the first half of the 20th century by using industrial transformation to take middle, uh, working South Australians rapidly into the middle class, as we stand on yet another, another effort to repeat that, that success, we too must acknowledge that regional South Australia will be central to the economic future of our state. We stand on the cusp of another moment of economic transformation. Countries all over the planet are looking for reliable, trustworthy power partners to power their decarbonisation and regional South Australia will be critical in producing the green hydrogen and the rare earth minerals that will be central to that global effort. I stand here today and utterly reject the idea that our regions rely on the city. In actual fact, it's entirely the other way around. We can only decarbonise our cities. We can only ensure economic prosperity to the masses because of what is going to be happening in our regions. This very uh, patch of our state in and around the Eyre Peninsula will be absolutely central to that endeavour. Although, to be frank, no part of the state will be left behind if we are to achieve our ambitions. But we start here on, on the Eyre Peninsula and, in the, and further north to the Upper Spencer Gulf, where the state government is making very substantial economic investments that are not aimed at political popularity, because it's too hard to explain half the time, but entirely aimed at an economic transformation of where we need to be. Our Upper Spencer Gulf hydrogen jobs plan is all about ensuring we capitalise on the opportunity before us to take our most abundant resource, the resource that many other parts of the world envy in no uh, underestimated way, 
our solar power, our wind power to be in the same place at the same, same time prevents, presents a resource uh, that is unmatched anywhere in the world. We can take that and turn that in the form of green hydrogen and export it to the rest of the world. The de decarbonisation effort globally is also entirely reliant upon electrification. Electrification is entirely reliant upon one critical mineral above all others, copper. The one resource that our state has always been abundant with behind, below the ground is copper. This is a new version of the gold rush. Once our copper forged, was forged into tools for the Victorian gold rush, now it is increasingly the more sought after metal. Even the newest generation of ultra efficient batteries for electric cars require 65 kilos of copper a piece which is around about four times as much copper as is found in a traditional combustion engine car. But if you, can't, but you, if you don't get the copper that is required for that global effort, it cannot happen in the first instance. We have that copper, but the only way we get access to that copper here in South Australia is if we have water, which is exactly why uh, the state government is actively pursuing the building of an extraordinarily large industrial a desalinisation facility right here on the Air Peninsula in the form of the Northern Water Supply Project. By producing industrial scale volumes of water via a multi-billion dollar plant, Northern Water has the potential to transform the Upper Spencer Gulf region to an even greater de degree than the Wyala Morgan pipeline did 80 years ago. It will mean a secure and reliable water supply for agriculture, for local communities and to drive green industries of the region and beyond. Yes, these are exciting projects, entirely filled with possibility. But to realise all this potential in our regions, we need something far more important. People. In some ways, regional South Australia has been a victim of its own success. The fact that the agricultural sector is one of the most productive industries, not just in the nation, but in the world is very much case in point. Everyone in this room knows that once bustling regional centres have become impacted by the huge uplift in labour productivity in the farming sector and the greater economies of scale offered by modern sustainable farming techniques and the easy availability of technology. And while such productivity is welcomed, it is nonetheless heartbreaking to hear about a country town losing its footy team or another club having to merge, a family business shutting its doors after generations of service to the community that they are so committed to. But the drift away from our regions in terms of population should not be seen as a trend that cannot be reversed. In fact, over the last few years, there has been evidence that that reversal may already be happening. People are looking for more space, looking for better housing value, different lifestyle choices. The availability of high quality internet services has created options for work-life balance that previous generations could only dream of. New industries, new job opportunities, they create and give us a chance to revitalise our state's regional communities, but that will require government initiative and government intervention. We know there is market failure when it comes to housing policy in regional South Australia. We know there are businesses yearning to expand their employment based not for the fact they can't get access to people, people who are not here because of access to housing. My government recognises this as a major economic constraint to growth, which is exactly why we have established programs such as our Key Worker Regional Program, which is a pilot to demonstrate that government intervention can unlock access to private capital. We are starting that pilot by delivering housing accommodation for key workers within the state public sector with the view to expand that program to the private sector if the pilot can be proven to stack up. This is a pilot scheme that is already up and running. First homes in Mount Gambia, followed by the Copper Coast, Port Augusta, Sejuna and the Riverland. But the other big break on the investment in people, of course, is access to skills and training, especially for the sorts of jobs that this region will require. 
people shouldn't have to relocate to Adelaide to get the qualifications they need to work in their own hometown. That is why the state government is investing in Port Augusta and Mount Gambier technical colleges, amongst five of them. And speaking of Mount Gambier, there are also enormous opportunities there outside of the traditional decarbonisation uh, industries that have so many people excited. Traditional industries in the southeast, such as agriculture, but also the forestry industries, are prime for growth. Uh, my government just last week received from Kevin Scarce his design for the master plan of a brand new $65 million facility in Mount Gambier to combine a technical college, a forestry centre of excellence, along with a major upgrade to the TAFE in that region. The single biggest investment in education services within the southeast of the state for generations, all aimed at capitalising on growth on the back of the intuition of higher skilled and better trained people. We've also recently announced a $2 million commitment to regional skills centres, five confirmed for the Limestone Coast, the Murraylands, Cleve, Port Augusta and Berry. And uh, my team have assiduously given me a long shopping list of other initiatives that the state government is making in regional South Australia. But understand at the core of each of those initiatives is a serious determination to unlock the economic potential that exists within our regions. And, and I hope you don't mind me um, doing so, um, to make a, uh, a self-evident uh, political point. But we make these investments in regions that aren't voting for my side of politics. Now, I would like that to change. But we make these investments in regional South Australia because at the heart of our objective is not a political one. In fact, at the heart of the objective has to be something that we all should come accustomed to realise, particularly people in Metropolitan Adelaide is we have no choice but not to make investments in regional South Australia because in so many ways our city's economic fortunes will depend upon the prosperity that the regions can provide. We choose to invest in hydrogen power plants, technical colleges and desalinisation facilities that aren't going to supply water principally for human consumption, not because they're easy to understand, not because they're politically popular, not because they serve to provide an electoral advantage, but because we have no choice but to make these investments to unlock the potential that everybody knows exists. We truly are on the precipice of achieving something unique in the state. Eventually, people will stop buying coal and sometime in the distant future, natural gas demand will decline as well. We cannot sustain ourselves exclusively on extractive industries that speak to an era of the past. We must focus on the industries that will underpin our economic tomorrow. And Upper Spencer Gulf, the southeast of our state, through the productive fruit bowls of the Riverland and the York Peninsula, this is where our economic future lies as a state and as a government we are determined to realise it. But ultimately that can only be achieved through partnership, with people in regional communities, and to the extent that the Bush Summit today helps unlock that sense of partnership, then that is something I'm very grateful to be part of, and would like to thank News Corp for, for facilitating. Thank you very much.